Welcome to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast, where world-changing spiritual entrepreneurs come to deeply awaken the power within to bring forth their greatest purpose, to create massive awakened impact for millions of souls around the planet while enjoying being in tune with all life and real wealth in all aspects of their lives. I'm your host, Daniel John Hanneman. And welcome, everybody. So glad to have you here. Another amazing Spiritual Rockstar podcast. I have uh, another amazing guest. This is going to be a little bit of a different show. I've had many guests do a little bit of work with me and whatnot. This guest is going to be doing a lot of work on me, I guess, today. So we're going to see what unfolds. It's going to be amazing. There's a lot of um, background and depth to this work. Um, don't let the title of this show fool you. Soul contract. Well, I know soul contract. You don't know as much as you think. There's a lot more we're going to dive into. There's a lot of depth that goes into this. And, you know, if you heard of things like human design and all that sort of thing, well, if you love that, you're really going to love this. This is, takes everything even to another level from the way I understand the little bit I know about it. So looking forward to sharing Nicholas with you in just a moment. Do you want to meditate and make money? Let it be simple. Let it be easy. Let it be fun. Go to yoursacredpurpose.com and get your free meditate, make money meditation today. Nicholas, glad to have you here. Yeah, I look forward to um, exploring this with you, Daniel. Thanks for having me on the show. Okay, so let me let them know a little bit more about you. So Nicholas David Nan is a co-founder of the Center for Conscious Ascension, which is regarded as a world leader in the fields of soul contract reading, divine healing and light body integration, and has been working at the cutting edge of raising human consciousness for over 30 years. His main focus is on teaching practitioners and these modalities to raise consciousness. His Amazon number one best selling book, Your uh, Soul Contract Decoded, Discovering the Spiritual Map of Your Life with Numerology and Gaia.com, Open Minds shows with Regina Meredith have spread the soul contract work globally. His interview will be based on over 50, is, is based upon over 50 person years of development, person years, I love the framing of that, of the soul contract reading work to uh, help light workers manifest their soul purpose. So, all right, so well, let's go ahead. Let's learn more about like, everybody talks about, well, you got a soul contract for this and that and everything. And, you know, sometimes I say things like that when I'm reading people, but, um, you know, you have, a, you have a system or you have, you know, something you, you're using that's, um, you know, helps to actually get to the truth of what what is the soul contract and what's that all about so what what is the soul contract after all people fancy that term around a lot what is it actually well in this case it's um based on the principle that sound is creative and when um great spirit mother father god whatever you want to call the creative force in this universe um created us or created the universe this particular universe it used the sounds 22 sounds, um, in this case, we use Hebrew, ancient Hebrew. And those sounds came out of the movement of great spirit and the creation of creation through the um, geometry of the flower of life. Uh, and so out of that comes 22 movements of God in the form of ancient Hebrew sounds. And if we match those ancient Hebrew sounds to um, our birth certificate names in whatever language that is, and then we extract the Hebrew numbers, which are inherent within ancient Hebrew, and we decode them on a Star of David, we can actually work out what is deeply programmed into us at a soul level, in our physiology, in our DNA, in a substance called karmic matrix, which is like a great cold of energy that's at the fourth and fifth and sixth dimensional levels of our being that contains our entire program that... Basically, what it does is it radiates from us out to the matrix. In the matrix, a hologram, our reality around us, rearranges around those sounds and to create our subjective life experience. So this is the deepest level of programming in us that creates our reality. 
So in understanding what this is about means we can see where our soul wants to take us because most of us go around in life, I, I was, going around in the dark. Driving around in the dark in a car with lights off, hitting lots of, lots of things and things weren't working too well. Whereas this brings the light of consciousness, spiritual consciousness to, well, what's really going on? What does our soul want us to learn as personalities? Because we're, we created brand new each lifetime, our personalities, which are separate from the soul. And this ego personality construct is created by the soul contract. It's like a filter for us to experience life in a very specific way. And when we understand that filter, Daniel, we can navigate it much more consciously and stop doing the things which aren't working. What you think might work, it comes from our ego, but actually work out what the important things are. So we put 80% of our effort into 20% of things that really matter. Then we progress in life. Then we learn because the soul creates our soul contracts so that we have a specific set of learning lessons based upon our past life experience. And that enables us to move forward and grow through the, the visceral, often challenging experience of life. And the soul aims to direct us in a specific direction, but we have free will choice in how we'll experience that and what we do with it. That's sort of the essence of the work. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I know there's a lot of depth when we had our meeting. There's like, I took a lot, you know, quite a few notes anyway <laughs> of everything you were talking about with, with your work. So uh, I know there's a massive depth to the, the knowledge and wisdom you bring into it. Uh, so my question is, is how did it change your life? What you, what you've learned through this, like how, what, where were you? What, how did you come across it? How did it, how did, so in other words, where were you? And then how did it change your life? Well, I always had a feeling when I was younger, especially in my teens and my early twenties, that there was something special I was here to do here on earth. I went looking for the answer and no one could tell me. Wasn't it school? Wasn't it? Wasn't it university? Wasn't it work? And I thought someone's not telling me something very important. And so I was, I, I was born in New Zealand, and um, I had this urge to go out and explore the world and find out what, what that important thing was. And so I left New Zealand in my mid twenties to go and explore um, in Southeast Asia. Buddhism and I mean, Thailand and Tibet and China and I was, I was searching for something because I'd been in the corporate world for a while after university and it wasn't really giving me what I needed. I was searching for greater purpose and um, I ended up in Japan. I met a, met a friend there or made a friend there who introduced me to Frank Alpa who's the founder of this work, the Soul Contract Reading Work week. He called it the spiritual numerology of Moses because it's channeled from the soul of Moses. And she gave me this brochure for one of his workshops called the Carousel of Growth in Phoenix, Arizona. And I had it in my bag, my backpack for a year and I was determined to get to it. There's this magnetic draw and it was very important to go to this workshop even though I'd never been to America, I'd never heard of him before. And she told me amazing things about um, where he taught. So I got there a year later in January, when was it, 1990. And I walked into this hotel conference room there in Phoenix and there were 30 other people at this level one carousel of growth workshop and they all seemed very familiar. It was past life connections that turned out. And then Frank started teaching and it felt very familiar to me. I thought, oh, I'm home for the first time. I've found home. I'm, I'm going to get something very important um, from this experience for a week with these people. It was very special. And um, during that workshop, I had a, I had a numerology reading, numerology of Moses reading with Frank. And he just asked me for my birth certificate name. And he put it on a Star of David. He decoded the Hebrew sounds and numbers out of it, did some maths. And in that hour, he explained my entire life with all its disparate, crazy experiences, which made no sense. He put it all in order. And my life was completely changed in that hour. And I was determined to learn how to do this from then on, because I, I, I basically learned I was here to come into my power and become a spiritual teacher, which is what I'm doing 30 odd years later. And I've been guided by that ever since. And I was also determined to learn and learn this. I said, well, when do you teach this? And he said, well, we're teaching in about six weeks. So I just stayed in America for another six weeks. 
for coming to England, which was my just original destination. And I brought it to England and Europe and um, had been developing it for the past 30 odd years, along with Almira Ariel Haller, who's formed the Center for Conscious Ascension with me. And giving readings, soul contract readings and teaching practitioners and raising consciousness with it. That's sort of how the whole thing started really. And I'd found my purpose, which is to teach the stuff. I was very passionate about it and to help people rise in consciousness. That's how the whole thing started really. Just following my nose, my intuition of what felt right. right. And finding, finding the answers as a result of trusting my sort of first inner gut feeling of what I should be doing. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what we're all about here at Spiritual Rockstar is <laughs> reminding people that, you know, there's there's that infinite intelligence, there's that, that that impulse and to follow that look. I mean, all the specifics. Yeah, this 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 wonderful thing that um, you came upon and, you know, the development you've done with it and how you've grown and how many people you've helped. But it all starts with like you followed your intuition. And I think that's. You know, so beautiful. So that's, yeah, it's something again, big reminder, guys, just trust that impulse, even if it seems totally crazy. Like how crazy it must have seemed to you. Well, go to Arizona. You're, if you got in your head about it, you'd be like, wow, that's, that's not right. Like, <laughs> I didn't have any choice. It felt like I just had to go. So I just turned up, never been to America, never didn't know how this whole thing, never been to a big spiritual conference like that at all before. So right. it was like, um, we just have to trust in the flow because there's nothing else to do. It feels the only thing to do. It's like right. I was magnetized there. That's how it felt. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, something feels really that strong. Yeah. There, for many of us anyway, it feels like we, I, you don't have a choice and it's like, like you're just doing what you're supposed to be doing, so to speak. Right. Okay. All right. Here we go. <laughs> totally. So, all right. Um, so I know there's what I kind of wonder, you know, I asked you about this when we met before, too. So there's all kind of different systems out there, right? I can't even keep track of it, you know. Yeah. Do you know your Enneagram yet? Do you know your 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 human design? And you know, do you you know this one? Do you know that one? Oh, until you know your strength finder, you're lost. And if you don't know this system, then you're lost or that one, or where, you know. Um, so what's your take on all that? Because you know easily like somebody that has a kind of thought like oh my god all these systems are helpful but i mean how far are we going to take this like everything all these things are going to tell me how to live my life um i would imagine a lot of people would have a lot of resistance to that and also be very excited about it at the same time so i wonder if you could address that well there's seven billion plus human beings on earth and a, and a percentage small percentage of those are one or two percent of light workers who are seeking their real purpose. So three or four hundred million people say. Um, and there are many different pathways back to God, back to source, because we are playing what's called a game of separation from spirit. We were at source originally. We were all part of all that is. And then we densified down from the 12th dimension in the model we use, all the way down to this seemingly physical third dimension. We identify consciousness and light. And by the time we get here, we forget that's where we come from. So once when we're born here, we normally most people don't remember where they came from, that we came from, came from God originally. And so the purpose of that is to feel separate as possible. And that's why people are always searching for the meaning of life, because they know something's missing. It's like the splinter in your mind in the matrix. Something's missing. Something's not right with this reality. Because they're searching. A way to get home in consciousness to God and rise in frequency into the different dimensions. So God, in the spiritual sense, provides many pathways so that because down here there's complete free will choice. You can do what you want um, and you'll learn what you need to learn as a result. So Mother, Father, God provides all these different pathways, different divination tools, Enneagram, human design, Pythagorean numerology, soul contract reading work, so that we can, we have a free will choice to choose what, what is going to wake us up, what's going to give us the tools and the direction so we can get back to God. Um, and so that's that's why there are so many systems. And we tend to gravitate towards the ones which we're resonant with. So I found with this work, 
people who are ready to hear the really high frequency truth of it because it's it's based upon the 22 sounds of God basically through Hebrew. It's one of the five sacred languages. Now they're drawn because they're ready to hear. They're ready to hear what it has to say. Other people are not drawn at all. They go to something else. Um, I've noticed on, on for my Amazon other one best-selling book, you also contract decoded. It either gets four or five stars on either side of the Atlantic, and people rave about it. They love it. Or gets one to two stars and people say, I'm confused, I don't understand this, makes no sense to me. And there's nothing in the middle. It's because those guys weren't ready to hear that level of truth. Their ego wasn't ready to handle that because their ego is designed to keep us away from God, keep us unconscious. So it's pretty polarizing, I discovered. I was, I was very fascinated by that, the, um, the effect of it. So you've got to sort of have a threshold of consciousness for each different divination tool and then you're ready to hear it it'll come at the right time we'll give you another piece of the, of the puzzle okay so this is why we have all the tools because of the unique way each human being is built and we are sparks of the creator of the divine who forgot who we were and so therefore the creator provides the means if we so choose out of free will choice to awaken Mm -hmm. And how we do that is entirely up to us. That's why there's so many therapies and modalities. Because we are the creator, creating through the process of our lives. It's not some um, bearded white guy sitting on a throne in the clouds or in, you know, somewhere in the universe. We are the creator, creating through each moment of our life, having this visceral, often painful, sometimes joyful experience of life to go back to source. Because when we're in these bodies, it's actually there's a big queue upstairs to come into these bodies because the emotional intensity is much greater than when you're than when you're in the higher dimensions because you're in a body. So this is where we get maximum learning, which is the most valuable thing for the soul. So the main thing is to learn to awaken, burn through all the ego construct um, programmed in by the soul contract to keep us separate from God, to keep us unconscious, and try and awaken and feel that reconnection, build that connection to God. That's what that's the meaning of life. So the, the challenges we face, we put there at a soul level, we program them in based upon what happened in past life. We usually continue similar themes in each life and we build upon them. So in overcoming those challenges and transmuting our karma, we turn, the, turn that into our gifts of service. That's going from the negative expression of a particular energy to a positive expression, because there's 22 of them in the system. That's the whole point of life. Although most people turn away from their karma because it's too painful for the ego, therefore they get stuck. And so people who aren't on the spiritual path, aren't doing their work, tend to get um, pretty unhappy by middle age or maybe bitter, and they just give up a lot of people because they don't have the tools to work on their issues. But spiritual people tend to get younger as they work on their issues because it's lighter on the body, the more of that karmic patterns they heal and they go because they're aware of them. So, so that's how it works, this game of separation. It seems a bit warped, but actually this is, this is the most intense way to learn for the soul. It used to be we came, we embodied and had no ego, but apparently we just sat around just being blissed out, doing nothing. And the spiritual hierarchy said, well, that's not working, so we need to introduce <laughs> a veil of our consciousness so, <laughs> so we can wake up. A bit of a waste of time creating all these right. planets coming down yeah. here. Landing, we create nothing. all this opportunity for separation energy and you're wasting it come on now <laughs> well the thing is they, did, they didn't feel separate at that stage you see they said, well, uh -huh. we, i know i'm god and body so i don't have to bother doing anything because i'm perfect i'm uh -huh. in unity so they said okay let's let's create it so that so that we're not connected so right. we have to search for that connection which is what drives us forward spiritually so it took a while to work out how to build the build the matrix build the system of being separate so the souls would learn. So you know, there, are, there are billions of souls on billions of planets through the galaxy and, and the, uh, this universe are all learning through this process. That's the whole point of why we have planets. It's not that they appeared and then we emerged out of the primordial ooze as an accident. It's the only reason they're here. So the creator can experience itself separate from itself, then experience itself going back. It takes billions of years for a particular species to get back to source through all the dimensions. 
but that's the learning the creator wants. Mm -hmm. so it's a big, vast school of learning. Yeah. On a massive scale that we are part of. I could go really deep with this subject, but I think that'd take a few shows. So, <laughs> so I, I we'll, we'll we'll go with we'll go with uh, what you said and just really soak that in and you know all that good stuff. And I really want to get into the maybe a little bit more of the nuts and bolts, so to speak, of the work at this point. Because I like I said, I would lose myself in this conversation. I we could go deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, so yeah, we're talking about uh, you know the. I know that I was drawn to you, like I was drawn to your energy without really knowing a whole lot about, you know, anything and what you teach about. So that's why we're here today. And so I know that something incredible is going to come through this time together and what you're going to share for me. And so when we're looking at the, you talked about it already, but like, again, like the so the contract, the way I'm just interpreting everything you're saying in a totality is when we look at well, what's it going to do for you and how's it going to help me and all that stuff. I mean, I know that you utilize these things to help people with really any area of their life, including their business. And, you know, uh, well, well, geez, you know, should you do your next launch uh, this way or that way? I, this, you know, these type of things can help with that. Like it can help you understand more about yourself and what's going to, you know, mm, you know, get you, get you to where you want to go faster in a way <laughs> or something like that. So um, is that, is that right? Am I missing something? I don't know. So that's, uh, no, you know, you know what, what it does is it gets very specific and tells you what the souls, why the soul's manifesting these very challenging experiences and some nice ones as well. Why is this happening? Mm -hmm. And therefore, once you understand why it's happening, the system also gives you recommendations of what you can do about it to transform the program. Because it transforms, as I said, um, from a, a negative expression, which is karmic, into a positive expression, a gift to serve, to serve others. Because we're here to help each other wake up here on earth. And so when we understand the specifics of what is, what is our awakening process and how to overcome the challenges, then we can focus and get on with it. We make a lot more progress spiritually rather than bidding our head against a brick wall, which most people do until they wake up. Um, so basically, it's a spiritual map of life. It gives you the map on which to travel through life so you don't waste time doing things which are never going to work. The ego may think it's going to work, but um, if the soul doesn't want it to happen, it's not in alignment with where the its energies are, it's never going to happen, no matter how hard you try or, or hope or pray or whatever you do to manifest things. It won't happen unless it's in alignment with the soul. So what it helps you do is align with all the soul energy. When you do that, life opens and flows. Mm -hmm. you, are, you start to follow eventually what we call the spiritual signature. Of it. And each moment is one right action, which opens the heart, because the soul's telling you as the heart opens, um, this is where I want to go. When you, when you follow that spiritual signature, all sorts of lovely things happen in life. It unfolds with much more grace. It's, it's not so... It's not so hard edged. Um, and then different gifts come online as we get more conscious. We start to deliver them. Life becomes more fulfilling and joyful. Um, most human beings aren't having that at the moment, especially on Earth. So this helps you move in a different realm altogether because you've been guided. You're surrendering, dropping out of the ego, which thinks it knows what's going on, but it doesn't really know anything at all because it's, it's only a 50-50 chance you'll get it right by following the mind, dropping into the body and going with the feeling of the flow of what the soul contra energies are guiding us to do. And when you follow spirit, it's it's usually always going to work. It'll be challenging sometimes, but it's going to work. So we get, we're getting to a flow state. Isn't that life. interesting, though, the idea that it's going to work? It's like, what does that mean sometimes? It's like, we got what we wanted or do we feel fulfilled or is it both or you know like i mean maybe the right you know like okay it didn't work but man it felt like it feels it feels amazing that i made that choice all the same like that might be working in a way right like it doesn't necessarily mean like my mind thinks it worked it's a matter of 
yeah, I'm curious about that because our mind has all kind of ideas that worked, that didn't work, you know, and it's all just a bunch of opinions and random opinions and concepts to me, like usually. And it's really like, you know, it all worked uh, in a way. Um, but there is more, like you said, like a more connected path, right? Uh, one that's more fulfilling and more expanded or however you want to put it, right? Yeah, there, there is one right action in each moment. And as we burn through our ego by learning about and working with our subcontract issues, the, the barrier to getting into higher consciousness in the, high, in, in the fourth and fifth, and the high, sixth dimensions, the higher self slowly dissolves. So then we get higher consciousness coming through us to guide us. And the idea is to get the ego just gradually dissolved and then allowing that higher consciousness to come through, not get so distorted or completely blocked, mm -hmm. which is what happens when we're really much younger. And that, if we allow that spirit, which is the part of us out of the body to guide us, then life gets life gets pretty interesting because we're going to be spending more time being in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, mm -hmm. and life opens and flows. So, and in the end, once you get there, it's like there's nothing else to do but that because why would you want to do something out of the line of the spirit? It's just going to hurt. So, right, right, exactly. In some way, financially, emotionally, energetically, it's just not going to work. Right. Right, you'll get all kinds of different signs. This isn't working. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, totally. All right. Well, great. Well, I'd love to just dive in. I know you're gonna, you've got, you're gonna share things up um, to our audience. You'll learn, you know, you'll learn uh, uh, a lot by what Nicholas is gonna do and uh, sharing information with me. I'm going to ask him my most important question that I possibly could have, which <laughs> I'll take a stab at whatever that might be. But, you know, I'll, I'm going to ask him a question. He's going to, you know, utilize um, th this, this work to help me with what's what my question is. Um, but you'll all learn, you know, yourselves in the process is what I'm I'm knowing about these sorts of things. So could you explain more to them about that? So um, you'll put it better than I, I do. So yeah. Well first I'll explain how how we decode your name based on your birth certificate name. Then we'll get into um, answering that most important question in this moment about your life. Mm -hmm. Because we come to this work usually at a real nexus point where there's something important we need to we need to understand. To, to move forward so okay. right so what we're doing uh just for people that are listening through the podcast <clears throat> nicholas is sharing um through uh the youtube video you can find it through the video um on spiritual rockstar he's showing charts he's showing my chart right now and you can access that on youtube at spiritual rockstar podcast and we're going to give you other ways to be able to access this information too as the show goes on so okay nicholas so uh, take us away then let's just get into it then okay so first off i will explain how we got the numbers on your chat I and mean, then you can ask your question give you a bit more time to think about that so we take your name on your birth certificate and what we do first off here is we convert it into the equivalent Hebrew sounds. Yeah, using 22 of the Hebrew sounds. And then the Hebrew numbers drop out of these numbers, out of these characters, okay? So they are inherent within the sounds of Hebrew. It's, it's unlike conventional numerology most people are familiar with, where you assign numbers to the letters of the Roman alphabet. They are one and the same thing which is why this is quite different, this process. Okay, so these numbers aren't related to conventional numerology at all. What we're gonna do is that they represent a Hebrew, each one represents a Hebrew frequency. And it's a label with a, uh, a Roman number, so we understand it. So we're gonna decode these numbers on the Star of David. And the way the Star of David works, it's like a gateway of consciousness that we need to go through in order to come into the earth plane at the soul level. You need to come with a contract of some sort, or you're not allowed in. And you also have to be of the right level of soul evolution to come to a school of learning like Earth. We come here about 48 to 72, 72 times on average. So there's two triangles in the Star of David. There's a large downward pointing triangle, which is a physical one. And that represents the creation of the ego personality interface 
with the matrix, with the world, because Daniel John Hanneman as a personality is brand new this lifetime. Every lifetime we have a unique, different personality um, that's going to create a unique experience for us. So the, the soul is the one who has the past lives. Like you and me, Daniel, as personalities have never had any past lives, but the soul has. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the creation of the personality, getting landing here on earth, getting conditional responses, education, work, relationships, houses, changing jobs, and all the things we do in the first five cycles of seven years, which is 35 years of life. And between the ages of 35 and 42, the sixth cycle of life or earlier, the upward, large upward pointing spiritual triangle activates more. It's running at the same time, but it becomes more predominant. And this is where the soul is trying to activate the, um, the real spiritual purpose of life. So it's conventionally seen as, this, as the midlife crisis where people question everything or dark night of the soul or initiation of fire. It's where we question everything about our life. And people often change jobs. I mean, when I was 37, right in the middle of this, I was I was sitting in a suit in the city of London in a, in a, in a, in a corner glass, off glass um, box in a, in a big um, communication company. And an angel went by in the form of a big cloud, the only cloud in the blue sky day. And I knew in that moment that I was going to leave this job and do something completely different. It was like, it was almost like it was waving at me, this thing. Um, so it was my wake up call. And once that happened, I realized I can't, I can't stay in this job anymore. So I was transitioning from the physical triangle to the spiritual one. So what was your awakening, Daniel? What was your midlife crisis? What happened? What did you transition from and what do you transition to? Yeah, <clears throat> it's a good question. So Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how to answer that. I've had so many point inflection points. So how do you answer when you feel like you've had so many? Do you want me to just pick one? <laughs> just pick the strongest one. Hmm. What when you we start to really wake up and realize you know, there's something else I'm I've got to do here because the drive to find it gets very strong between 35 and 42 or younger. Well, I went and I studied to be a counselor, basically. I went and got my uh, master's in clinical psychology. And then I discovered um, I discovered science of mind, which is uh, you know, primarily a, a metaphysical type of teaching. Um, and I would say that was definitely a sort of an initiation into deeper awakening because that you know, led me to like the sense of opening and psychically melting down and just everything getting very, feeling very fluid. So I would say like, I go back to um, one of the biggest ones that would be that. Uh, the other big ones were um, like just getting to where, like with metaphysics, it's like we can make something happen, right? Make it happen, make it happen, make it happen. And then, you know, then I discovered more of, okay, what if I stop trying to make anything happen? And I just, just totally surrender. I just totally give myself. And then, you know, that started coming into me more when I started going to silent meditation retreats and things like that. And that, that was a process of deep awakening as well. So I, I gave you two, but like, those are the two that kind of come to mind. Yeah. So how old were you at those times? What was the age range when that was happening? The first round, I would say um, from the 90s, I have to do the math for a sec. Um, so it's like 30, 30s going into my, yeah, going into my 30s is when 30s, and I would say probably, yeah, getting into the mid 30s, 40s, like the first time. And then I had another one after that, um, just, you know, in recent years, uh, relatively recent, probably 45 you know, something like that, you know, I'm just estimating. Yeah. So you're on schedule. You're 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 in the window of 35 to 42. Things things start happening. So you're transitioning because the soul's wanting to activate and make the spiritual triangle more predominant and build it on the foundation of the spiritual of the physical triangle, provided you've done enough work on it. Mm -hmm. See, it sets this contract in motion, but it doesn't know what you're gonna do. 
It doesn't know what's going to happen, which is the unique thing about it. Because it can't interfere. All it can do is activate the thing and, and give you little tweaks occasionally. So what happens here is that um, it wants to draw your attention to particular aspects. There's six outer aspects around the star, David. And usually one or two of them are more predominant on a given day. They can stay there for years or months or weeks. So what, what, what they mean is that in each big triangle, we have three aspects. We have karma, physical karma in this case, top right, physical talents on the bottom, physical goals on the top left. And so karma means a set of unresolved past life issues the soul brings in to create the negative context of your life all the challenging stuff. And the only reason it's there is to overcome, to be overcome so that you can then transmute them by working on them. Because ego will want to go away and avoid it, but it's about turning into them and bringing feeling consciousness to them. And as you do that, and if you use the right healing tools that work for you, they turn into your gifts, your, your gifts of service. Because people keep asking, what's the purpose of my life? It's hard to find when you're running away from it. But by converting them into positive qualities, the gift starts to gradually become available. So how do we actually get hold of our gift? Well, the latent physical talents here, the bottom of the triangle will trigger as the karma activates from the moment you're born. And they will, if they're a good match, they will start to help you work through this. If they're not, not a good match, it's just going to take longer. Okay. And so as they get stronger, because they're helping transmute the physical karma, the physical talent is then also infused into the physical goal, which is like our, it's like our um, drive in life. It's what gets us out of bed in the morning. It's what excites us. So that's in the physical outer world. And on the spiritual realm, we have a spiritual karma. And this is a very key aspect because in transmuting it with our spiritual talent, same principle as for the physical triangle, that thing opens our consciousness in a very specific way to higher consciousness so we can embody that and deliver our gift. And then as that gets stronger, the spiritual talents then moves us to the spiritual goals. Again, what spiritually are, are our goals? Um, and it takes a whole lifetime to get through this, maybe many lifetimes to get through very similar patterns. Okay. And so if we consciously work on these six outer aspects, which you're able to do when you know what your subcontract is, what happens over time, draw a diagram here. This is percentage complete on a vertical left-hand axis. You gradually burn it through on all of them. And as you consciously do that, because you know what's going on now for the first time, I was so relieved when I learned what my contract was. What happens is that um, the, man, the soul destiny, the real, the real meaning of life, the per life purpose, soul purpose starts to manifest layer by layer. It's not all in one go because we couldn't handle it. But layer by layer, when we hit certain thresholds of growth, another layer of the soul destiny turns up and it's like, oh, I'm ready for that. Might have taken quite a while. And then another layer comes, another layer comes. So eventually you manifest this, provided you do enough conscious work that so requires a lot of dedication and drive to really look at some dark stuff initially, but and transmit it to the good stuff. But if you're a dedicated spiritual seeker, you'll get there eventually, but it'll take a whole lifetime. But it's going to be a much more fulfilling life if you do that rather than a frustrated life where there's unfulfilled potential. So we take the numbers at the top here. We allocate them on a clockwise expanding spiral around the star of David. You use them all up here, yeah. and then we add them up. So for example, physical karma, the total is 28. 28 doesn't have any particular meaning in the system because we have only 22 numbers with 22 interpretations channeled from solar Moses, but we reduce it to the first number between one and 22. So we go two plus eight equals 10, which has meaning. So there's a frequency of a 10. We go one plus zero equals one over here. So there's a frequency of a 10. A frequency of a one. So in this lifetime, you have the you experience the unique blend on this continuum. So there's a range of experience here. Say in physical talents, the total is 24. 
2 plus 4 equals 6. 6 can't be added to another number again. So 6 plus nothing is another 6. So you won't get a double number. So that means there's only one frequency of a 6 that you need to work with in physical talents rather than a, a range of frequencies like with a 10 ones. So it's a different experience. It's a more narrow range of expression. That's why some parts of our life you are, I've got a lot of, lot of room for maneuver and other parts that only one thing I can do and I can't get out of it. Okay. So we work all these outer numbers out accordingly. Take the physical numbers, the 10, 1, 6, 6, and 11, 2, place them on the top half of this table on the right. Take the spiritual numbers, 21, 3, 10, 1, 9, 9, place them on the bottom half. We add the two columns up to get the 67 and the 22. And 67 is reduced to the first number between 1 and 22. 6 plus 7 is 13. 2 plus 2 is 4. It becomes a sort of thing, the meaning of your life. And we pop that in the middle of the chart. And these channel symbols that Frank brought through here have a very specific meaning. They're like energetic portals that are going to help me answer your important question. So you want to, if you want to share that now, Daniel, we'll get into it. Yeah, I mean, it's probably one of the more common ones. It's like I'm more of an action kind of focus right now. So I'm like, okay, you know, even though I'm feeling, feeling, you know, mostly good, really good about what I'm doing, I've got some questions about it, but I'm like, what am I really supposed to be doing in this lifetime? <laughs> kind of a basic question. Okay, so in physical karma, you have a 10 1. Now, 10 is called potential manifestation. It's the movement of mother, father, God, balanced male, female energies of God coming into the earth plane to be of service. So you're here to use spiritual energy to be of pure service to people. You didn't come in here to do real physical stuff. And the one here is Archangel Michael, the masculine aspect of God. So unity, power, and stability. You came here to disseminate healing and knowledge in the service of others. To, and the 10 one is up in this karmic position is about overcoming the denial of God and the ego to connect to higher consciousness. So did you find when you were younger, it was challenging to meditate and connect to God? To higher consciousness i never tried as a kid but when i first started trying it was really hard because my mind was very racing you know yeah well this is this one here trying to stop speakers trying to stop you connecting to god so the idea is to overcome it how's it now at 52 that was that was easy when i meditate i meditate all the time so yes yeah, yeah. I mean, my mind might get busy like it can happen to anybody but you know when i really want it to be calm it's just like phew, or it's right away, you know, like it's really easy now where that, that's why I was, that's why I'm a meditation teacher in part. I'm like, listen, I couldn't meditate even for a minute when I got started. So if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have, you broke through this, this um, barrier in the mm -hmm. current position. Mm -hmm. So to overcome it, the physical talent is a six, six. This is called a convertible knot. So this is about taking an idea you're already resonant with manifesting into a physical form so are you very creative and focused daniel when you want to be yeah, yeah that's yeah. true yeah so it's very grounded it's taurian so this what it does it grounds you and focuses you we determined to break through when you're meditating to really get that connection to higher consciousness yeah 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 this, yeah, this is what did it because the this part of you can focus so i'm just going to do this if i know you sort of inherently know if i stay focused it'll happen just right. gotta, be, gotta be patient. Sound about right? Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This is very good for that. And it's very grounding as well. It's 11 2 here. When you were younger, did you feel a bit lost about how things worked in the world? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's the 11? The 11 is about structure. So it's about them to take all these ideas and concepts and discern, well, what's true for me and putting it in your own unique structure of truth. And then throwing away all the stuff which is not resonant to you. Okay. So you learn to build a structure of truth of how the world works. And the two is about learning emotional resiliency. It's a little spring symbol. 
So when you were younger, did you get easily shocked? Um, easily shocked? No, but I was sensitive and shy. Yeah, the, the sensitivity. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. what happens is that if there is a shock, you can, the spring can compress and it doesn't bounce back straight away. And were you impulsive when you were younger, Daniel? Sometimes I was, yeah. I would, I would like, I remember, uh, you know, I always tell the story when there was a, there was a bug on a window at, in the train station and I just was like, I'm going to kill that fly. We kill flies, right? Bang. And I put my, my, uh, I had a can of pop in my, my lunch bag and went right through the window. I'm like, so yeah, sometimes I was not, not hugely, but I was very, I had that impulse like, Hey, just do that. Hey, just do that. But I did a lot of like realizing, hey, that's not a good idea eventually. Bad idea, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is the lesson of foolishness to wisdom, where there's an impulse, a physical impulse, emotional impulse to do or say something. And then we realize oh, that went really badly wrong. And the wisdom is, don't do that again. Right. Yeah. right. So it's because you're moving up and down on the spring here and you're seeing the situation on a, from a moving perspective. So you, basically, it's about learning to wait to your top of the spring and you have maximum objectivity before you act. Then you'll make a wise decision. So the whole point of it is to, out of foolish decisions and actions and things said, you learn wisdom. Okay. Would you say you're a bit wiser now, 52? Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So one of the major reasons you're here is to teach from the soul, the three spiritual karma but first off you need to overcome the shyness because there's an uh, there's a plug of unworthiness emotional unworthiness in here that comes from childhood this 10 one's also saying there are issues with your father or male figures so do you want to share that yeah I, I mean i have had a lot of like awkward um feelings around masculinity and all that stuff so like i've got a conscious male leaders interview series i'm doing for an example all part of my ongoing really like the purest reason why is like I want to work on that aspect of myself like again and again like continue to work on that sense of that um because yeah as a kid you know I just I was into sports and stuff but then again I was like I I just don't really jive with this whole guy thing you know like entirely so it was kind of a mix for me and I was always kind of confused about that yeah we were exploring the male female balance here yeah and this is about having past lives of being disempowered in your masculine so yeah. then to claim the masculine power back so working with the, the conscious heart open masculine is very important for you okay very important part of the path and so the disempowerment from the masculine creates a sense of unworthiness to show yourself the shyness mm -hmm. and the idea is to peel that out gradually with emotional healing and to open this internal canal because in here there's deep a deep library of soul knowledge so it's about act, activating and connecting to that library so what are you most passionate about in terms of spiritual knowledge daniel i always say these days anyway like maybe my tunes changed slightly here and there but i always say hey we're we're infinite hey we're infinite intelligence we're infinite power um why do we, you know, and we we're infinitely connected, right? So it's like we need to start acting like it, you know, like like that's something I I, I talk a lot about because it's to me really important that that depth of awakening during these times because there's a lot of you know a lot of uh, like your consciousness being hijacked, you know, is is, is stronger as strong as as ever maybe you know i don't know but like it is a lot of uh, opportunities for people to be hijacked so i'm just like wait a minute wake up you know know your infinite intelligence and power therefore you can connect with your intuition you can connect with your presence you can know your own truth um and then follow your truth so basically that's what it comes down to yeah so that's your that's your core body of soul knowledge it's that communicating it you're doing that with all the podcasts communicating teaching leading with it Mm -hmm. This is leading from the soul. This is this vast library of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And the 21 here is the divine mother aspect of God. So have you had big challenges in your life, Daniel? Oh, sure. Yeah, totally. Yeah. What, what are typical ones you'd like to share with us? 
Uh, wow. Um, well, the shyness was huge because I just always felt like, like when I was younger, I was like, oh, life's so stupid. It's like, you know, everybody's like caught up in like being teenagers and, you know, all these ideas of how you're supposed to have sex with girls and then you're supposed to do this. You're supposed to be like that. So that made me depressed because I felt like, like I was shy and like, I just didn't want anything to do with that. So I didn't know really what to do with myself. And then, um, yeah, so that, and that, that feeling of like, um, yeah, I would say the challenge often is, is I feel this deeper sense of connection and, um, with, with source and with mm. power and that, and that I don't, I don't always, I always feel like there's something I probably should be doing with it. And of course I do use it, but then again, I feel like I want to be wise with how I utilize that sense of that connection. So that's been kind of like, that shows up in a lot of ways. That's why I've hit out a lot of times in life, you know, especially previously, but I feel like there's different levels of hiding out. And sometimes I feel like, boy, it's all going to be just, maybe I could just be too much for people and I just can't, they won't be able to handle, you know, that idea. Right. So it's like, it's really trusting the fullness of me to come out and that sense of power has been a big challenge in my life in many regards, because I can be very enrolling, very convincing um, to people and they want to follow me. So I, it's important for me to be a very good steward of that power. Yeah. So this is about engaging with that big challenge you just described, the challenges, and then gradually overcoming them to build, get the energy moving you to overcome it. So the divine mother energy is very powerful. It's about enduring the challenge and then becoming strong from that. Do you feel you're strong enough now after, after all that? Pretty strong, I feel, yeah. I've, 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 I mean, yeah, I've, I've endured a lot, yes. I had a lot of the, the suicidal thoughts and all that kind of stuff. And, and I've noticed like those have kind of almost disappeared. I don't, I don't, can't remember last time I thought like, I can't, I don't want to be in a body anymore. Like I don't really think that way anymore. So and it, it, that was going on for like my first 40, 50 years. I mean, like there's a lot, a lot of that that would pop in at times. So yeah, yeah. yeah it's usually because the ego doesn't want to deal with the emotions of earth. So it, it puts yeah. out what's called a death wish program. It doesn't mean you need to do anything about it. It's just that it's, it means that, it's doesn't want to feel certain things. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I would say real, you know, relatively recently, whatever amount of time, I don't know exactly, but like I, I'm like, I'm meant to be here. I want to be here. Let's go. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you've overcome the program at last. So. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in spiritual talents, you got a ten one here, which is similar to this, but it's not in karma. So, this is about opening the mind to God consciousness embody that so you eventually burn the ego out and become the walking talking expression of higher consciousness in pure service it's why you do the show to serve okay and having a really good channel this is this was blocking you from meditating this is the key that got you through this is the one where you were connected so you were connected and disconnected simultaneously and depending on the day one will be more dominant than the other Does that sound about right Mm -hmm. yeah 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 totally i've definitely had that experience yeah yeah so this is a lovely tool for bringing through the information you need to serve others and the spiritual goals you've got a nine and the nine's a dragon energy the most powerful energy in the system big serpent and this is where there's a lot of past life misuse of power and disempowerment that comes in so this is a very it's what we call a shadow destroyer energy so it's where there's a great resistance in the ego to unleashing your power because it's scared it will destroy you or those around you. Mm -hmm. The past it probably has. Yeah, it has. Yeah, definitely. yeah. So it's about engaging with the shadow component of this and transmuting it layer by layer into positive power. Because once the dragon is unleashed and let out of its cage, it will catalyze others to grow. So you're a catalyst right. to help others grow. Just by being in the room and breathing, you'll catalyze them without saying anything. Have you noticed that you push some people's buttons and you haven't said a word? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. A lot of people run away from me, too. Like, they won't even get near me because they already know, like, there's 
it's you know if i if, if that energy comes out they're like oh game over i better get out of here <laughs> well, basically drag dragon on deck we have a problem right exactly, exactly. <laughs> nothing i can do about it it's too strong but, so. but you're right like it's that classic thing it's like it happens you know whether i bring it out or not anyway it's happening anyway because people can sense it right so it's like may as well bring it you know is is what i've learned over the years <laughs> well, it's a gift of growth it's a question of whether they accept the gift you see. right right exactly yeah. yeah so in working through all these other aspects aspects we get the soul destiny which is the 13 four and the 13 is the divine feminine aspect of god water and wisdom these are these are higher waters and lower waters so it's about being in the flow of the watery emotions of the divine feminine in the heart aspect of god in the heart and feeling in them, our point of life is to surrender into that flow. What was your relationship like with your mother? Um, she's still alive. And you know, growing up, I would say I just always felt like, okay, my, my dad was, you know, working in a way, my mom was around. So I felt like, okay, my mom takes care of me. Um, she's a you know, so uh you know and i also feel you know she may be listening to the show <laughs> but my, my my experience is just that i did experience a sense of unconditional love but also in subtle ways you know conditional love which is probably true in most families but hmm. you know, it felt like okay as long as you don't cause too much trouble and argue with us too much then we're, then we're just you're, you just think you're, you're the prodigal son you're so great but i would challenge you know things so i'd be like well i don't believe that i feel this way and i'm like what's wrong with you, you want to argue with everything we say like not every and not everything like <laughs> the arguing again <laughs> and so um yeah i mean i felt a sense of love and nurturance for my mom and then i just feel like when i got in um when I, I almost felt like it got to some levels of enmeshment. So I, at some point, you know, again, my mom's listening, sorry, okay. But I, I just felt like I had to clear that. And that was very traumatic when I told my mom, like, cause I was going to therapy and it was like, this came exposed. And I was like, okay, mom, I, I've got to, I can't, I can't be talking to you so intimately about my life all the time. Like, this is like keeping me stuck i didn't know how to communicate it to her so and then the shift happened she was very unhappy about it and and then um and i feel like it's kind of changed things permanently like there's continues to be more of a sense of a uh, uh, a distance i'll put it in that word a distance with her to some degree ever since that time so well how old were you then exactly what i needed to do at that time so yeah how old were you at that time? I think it was 27, maybe. I'm thinking it was yeah. 27. Yeah. yeah. So what this is is about um, an imbalanced relationship with the divine feminine aspect of God represented. The archetype is represented by the way you relate to your biological mother. But also there's a, a separation from her, from mother, father, God, through the way we relate to our mothers and from, from, from the archetype of father, God, and the way we relate to our fathers. Mm -hmm. So your job is to is to um, un un yeah move out of the enmeshment into a balanced relationship with the divine feminine. Mm -hmm. Whole life is about getting a clear relationship with the divine feminine and with the divine masculine here. Mm -hmm. But when we heal those two separation archetypes, then we can really bring our gifts online. Mm -hmm. So you guys at a soul level plan that. So this mm -hmm. is about you coming into the softer side, the divine unconditional love of the divine feminine energy coming through you, healing the healing any heart wounds and taking any heart barriers. This can often put a stone wall over the heart because of what goes on um, in a parent-child relationship with a 13-4, dissolving that and allowing the, wa the water and wisdom, the love of the unconditional love of the divine feminine to come through you. And the force about sharing the flow of abundance and sharing that with the world. So you're here to take care of people, Daniel. Look after them unconditionally. Does that sound about right? Yeah. I mean, it's multiple lives. Yeah, definitely. So for sure. <laughs> yeah. 
So the whole purpose of this life is to unconsciously love others and care for them with, a create, with the feminine creator energy um, and to share the wisdom that comes to you and to feel in your heart what is the next right thing to do, what we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. and to intend it out to the world with your intention, but then to let it go and just trust that it will happen. It's not about making it happen. Right. Which is a very, um, it's a very North American archive. Let's go make it happen, no matter what. You know, it costs us everything. No matter what, it rips my whole body apart. Even it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's not about that. This is the opposite. Oh, cancel that thing. idea. Cancel. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's very painful doing that, doing that way. This is about feeling in the heart what's right, action, setting the energy in action to make it happen when it feels right, and then being still and trusting that it will come. Yeah. And then all good things will start to come to you. They will find you. Yeah, you've got to be a clear intention and give it some space and be open to receiving, be willing to receive that love, the gifts of the, of the um, flow of nature, of God's abundance. Mm -hmm. It's a different way of manifesting. And it's about trusting in the flow. Do you have a sense when something's going to happen and then it does? It turns oh, out. Yeah. yeah, I always yeah. tell people about all my restaurant experiences when I just imagine I want something. And even if I order another item, they bring me what I was imagining I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> it happens a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is about trusting in the flow and having a sense when it comes and accepting it unconditionally. Because with the more flow you accept from the universe, the universe says, ah, he feels worthy to receive the flow. Give him some more. But if you turn it away, the universe says, oh, we'll put a pause on it for now because he didn't feel worthy to receive that. Mm -hmm. So things will be a bit slower for a while, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah so it's about sharing the love and knowledge and wisdom of the divine feminine that's what this whole life is about mm -hmm. it's interesting you have the divine masculine and feminine in the chart here mm -hmm. real high frequencies so overall you're here to be of spiritual service to others in a very grounded focused way to build your own unique structure of truth and share it with others and support them emotionally to do that to share deep from the soul the soul knowledge and wisdom. And the 21 is about being very strong, being strong enough to overcome challenges and then to embody God consciousness and to come into your power to empower others and overall to love those who work with you. It's a sort of summary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why you're here. How does that sound? Sounds about right. You know, it sounds good. Sounds de pretty dead on. Like, yeah, I mean... Uh, it's it's it is interesting because i would my my mind would get confused about how am i supposed to be in the past it'd be like oh am i all soft and feminine and loving and nurturing or do i come out and i just fire let's go i'm gonna, I'm gonna destroy you unless you get to your truth and I well, it's all, it's all, all of that huh? comes simultaneously that's why it's a bit confusing sometimes you got them all running at the same time Right, exactly. And it's just it, now I just feel more like I just am who I am and it all just flows in its right way, you know, when it comes to that. So, um, so yeah, but it, 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 it's, it, it took time to, to let that come into me, though, you know, for sure. Yeah, it sounds like you made good progress. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely sharing, sharing knowledge because you're running the show now. So that's where it's, you know, you're getting there. Yeah, I mean, I've helped a lot of people. I mean, I've I've trained hundreds of people to be able to, you know, tune into their spiritual gifts and be able to do energy scanning. And I've had a, you know, fairly successful business as uh, makes real good money as employed other people, you know, contractors and other teachers and stuff to help me. And so, yeah, I've done, I've, I've had, you know, pretty good impact in the world. And like most people, I feel like, and there's so much more, it feels like that wants to come through. So, and that's good. Okay, so that's that's your that's your reading. That's a brief overview. Oh, that is awesome. That What's was really going on. Yeah, that's wonderful. I mean, it's, what I love about about this, and you know, first I'll make it more like, hey, I love this, and you know, all these other ones I've done. Like, it's like it's just it is. It's very confirming, and I think that's so important. You know, it's it sounds like oh, it's just confirming. You know, I think to the mind, it's like oh, that's not that big of a deal then. But to me, it's very important because it helps me appreciate where I've been, where I am today, 
and it, it you know without you saying explicitly like it also points to where more development more more growth or whatever you want to call it wants to happen too and it helps inform me of what wants to unfold next from from this this reading so it's been very very helpful in, in that regard and it's definitely unique i haven't seen someone share information in this particular way i don't believe i mean i don't know it's hard to say if ever because i have seen some very unique things before but this this is really really helpful really uh, nourishing so i appreciate it my pleasure glad you enjoyed it yeah yeah it's very it's definitely very accurate so i can definitely attest to that which i assumed it would be but you know hey guys this is totally accurate <laughs> and so yeah i would highly recommend i mean i know you have the opportunity for people to go ahead and you know learn more about all this and get their their own you know charts and readings and all that sort of stuff so do you want to tell them about that now or yeah you can um uh, if, if you if you love what Daniel went through here, you can actually generate your own free chart. We actually have before them um, using the software here. Um, it's you can find it at soulcontractreader.com. Probably can't read that there. Um, it'll, you just register and you can generate four free charts. And to find out what it means, um, you can get my number Amazon number one best-selling book, Your Soul Contract Decoded: um, Discovering the Spiritual Map of Your Life in Numerology, at um, the link your soul contract decoded.com. Mm -hmm. And so um, for the price of a, a book and the free software, you can find out what Daniel found out. It's all in the book. So yeah. that itself there. Um, and if you want a more personalized reading, um, you can look at the website um, center for conscious ascension.net and you can find soul contract readings on the left if you want a more personalized one. Um, so yeah, you can change your life with a little bit of effort, bit of reading. You can learn an awful lot. Oh yeah, I mean this Pro was just a thing. I mean I'm sure if I got more readings and stuff, it would, or more more guidance and counseling, so to speak, from from the charts. You know, it would be huge. I'd be like, well, now I got more questions, and you know, and then we continue to get more support. You know, for what wants to happen in, in that process. So. Um, one quick question before we start to really round this off is you said something to me that was interesting and I'm trying to make sense of it in my head a little bit right now. Um, you said, you know, cause I've gotten it, you know, support and, you know, study to some degree human design. I still don't feel like I know that much about it, but um, I've been, you know, coached in that and everything. And, um, and you said like, yeah, human design is like the, uh, call it like yeah that's like your vehicle and then the soul contract is the map so for people like ah, i got my human design i'm good i don't i don't know if i need this one too and like can you speak to that real quick uh, before we wrap up today yeah well the, the soul contract lays out the latent potential which you have the opportunity to actualize so it lays out the actual spiritual map that the soul wants you to travel down through these seven aspects here and then it could be a pathway like this, for example, through life. In human design, depending on the type you are, projector, manifester, or um, generator, or some mix, is the actual vehicle that you're using to drive down this pathway in terms of the way you're going to interact with the experiences the soul contract will create for you. And when you understand both, you then understand, okay, here's the pathway you need to follow. You need to converge on this pathway rather than going off, off track, which a lot of people do. It's normal. So ego thinks it knows better when it doesn't. <laughs> this is called following the spiritual signature. But when you understand how your vehicle works, then you can operate yourself in the optimal way in terms of traveling down this path. And if you do this, throw a bit of astrology in, then you've got 99.9% .9 of what you need to know to, to, to um, make or allow life to really happen in a much more fulfilled way. Mm -hmm. So... It's a combination of, say, astrology, human design, and this work, which will give you everything, yeah, everything you need. Yeah, yeah. To, to make a much more, yeah, fulfilled, aligned life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, go ahead and check this out. We're going to put the link in the show notes. And 
um, yeah, I just, uh, as much as anything too, there's a transmission of just receiving from David that's very, very um, nourishing and pleasant and beautiful. Um, and I'm sure you could feel that, you know, through the show. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, we've come to the, uh, the time of the show too, where um, I'd like to go ahead and yeah, do the little tuning in that we, that I do for my guests at the end of the show. Uh, see if there's any messages that want to come through for you today. Um, yeah, would you like to right. respond that briefly? Okay. All right. Let's see what comes through. They're showing me a tree, which, you know, I take as like maybe the, the, the tree of life, right? But like, they're showing like, they're like telling me like, there's many doors into this tree. And for some reason, they want me to just remind you there's, there's many doors into that. And you even kind of were saying that today. So, but like, there's many doors into this tree. Um, so they're even encouraging you, right? The student, always a student and teacher at some level just surrender that there's so many different ways that people can get in to this work, you know, is what I'm hearing. Like there's so many different ways. Um, so there may be more creativity that wants to even come in, even though I know you're really creative. Um, there may be even some more fun and creative ways for people to get into the work that is one to come through is how I'm interpreting that. Okay, let's see what else is coming through. Yeah, something about um, maybe earlier in this life and there's fighting in the family or something, but they're like, you, you know, you, you know, again, I know you've come so far and everything, but they want to remind you, 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 you couldn't control that. You couldn't, you, you know, you couldn't control that. And so even though, again, you teach it, it's like, they're like, just, you know, it, it served, it's good. It's, it, it, you know, it, you know, it served its good. Um, there's nothing else that you were supposed to do or should have done. They're just trying to, you know, help you to forgive yourself, even if there's like 1% left. They're like, you you did fine. You, f you did fine. Like, just a reminder. Okay, let's see what else has come out. Just just an encouragement, just a message of encouragement. Hey, you're, you're passing with flying colors, you know, being on the, on your path. And then I just feel like, you know, it's just that you can amplify, you know, you can amplify your frequency of, of, of your work. And to, um, I'm getting like, it's kind of coming to me through meditation to amplify the frequency of, of, of those doors opening for people to come into this work more and more increasingly. Um, let's see. Yeah. And I'm just kind of getting a, a stop. So, yeah. So just some just kind of simple messages, but yeah, just a few things that wanted to be, uh, that were coming through to share for, for now. There's always more, but those are the few real quick ones. Thank you, Daniel. Appreciate it. <laughs> sure thing. Sure thing. And so everybody, if, you want to check me out, you can go to yoursacredpurpose.com. Go get your free meditate, make money meditation already if you haven't. So you know, it uh, really helps you to open up and receive uh, the energy that uh, wants to come through and answers to allow yourself to prosper. So check that out at yoursacredpurpose.com. There's also um, at this time still an application there for you to be able to apply to get an energy scan consultation for me where I can, you know, look specifically at your energy, your chakras, your business and everything and help you see how you can rock it to the next level. Um, and that's a free consultation for those that qualify through the application at yoursacredpurpose.com. The last thing is I am live every Monday that when I'm in town, which is most of the time lately, um, it, you, at 3 p.m. Central, where I do energy scans and channeling and share wisdom around you guys being able to rock it with awakening and sales, both. So check that out on Mondays at Rock Your Sacred Purpose Facebook group. All right, so uh, Nicholas, as we're wrapping things up, uh, I just want to go ahead and give you the, the last word. Uh, any last words for the audience? Yeah, I hope this has helped. Um... 
if you guys know that there is a pathway to a more fulfilled and happier life. Um, it's easily accessible with a bit of work reading the book. Um, it can completely transform your life. So wish you the best in the, on, on the ongoing journey. Yeah. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you so much for being on the show today. As we're so grateful. And thank you for everyone who's listening in. As I always say, keep on tuning in. We'll keep on rocking it here at Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. So the next time, everyone, goodbye for now. Listening to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Stay tuned for our next upcoming new episodes each Saturday. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to help us to serve you best. As a reminder, you can get your free Meditate and Make Money meditation at www.yoursacredpurpose.com to rock your sacred purpose. Goodbye for now, everybody.